Hi there, I'm LEC sales engineer Matt Kreitz. And I'd like to welcome you to LEC's video series on IQ2. You know, one of the many benefits of LEC's IoT solution is our extensive portfolio of hardware options that allow you to choose the appropriate hardware to meet the requirements of the project. One of those that we now have available is from Option CloudGate. Option CloudGate is a rugged, low cost, industrialized cellular edge router that can be used in a variety of projects and verticals like oil and gas and even water wastewater. They have both cellular and non-cellular models. So if you only need IQ2 because you already have adequate internet access from DSL, satellite or broadband at a job site, we can utilize the non-cellular cloud gate or even better, go with the cellular option and use that as a communication backup. So let's now take a quick look at the cloud gate hardware. We start with the CloudGate LTE Rev4. This cellular router can support all LTE bands, so we can deploy this device in a variety of locations. It comes with GPS capabilities, as well as dual ethernet ports. Why is that important? Because if you have, say, a PLC or an RTU in the field that's already collecting the data, you can connect that PLC or RTU to one of the ethernet ports on the front of the CloudGate, and then utilize that secondary port as a comms backup. Let me explain. Say you have satellite internet available at a job location. You can use that secondary ethernet port to connect that satellite's router to the cloud gate, and then set the cloud gate up to use cellular as a backup. So you can use satellite as your primary connection, and then if should it ever go down for any reason, the CloudGate will then be able to switch to cellular to ensure communication downtime is minimal. And then once those comms are restored, the CloudGate can switch back. The Ref4 also has an extensive library of expansion cards and it can add even more features like Wi Fi, RS232, and 485, a four port switch if you need some additional Ethernet connections, and even a smart meter card that comes with some onboard IO. And that's only a very small few of the cards option has available. Next, we have the CloudGate Mini, which is a new offering from Option that has many of the same benefits of the Rev4, but also has a few new ones. As you can see on this model, it does have some onboard I.O. on the front of the device. So if you have projects that only require maybe one or two I.O. points, we can utilize the CloudGate Mini and then couple that with IQ2 and it becomes a very low cost IOT solution. Lastly, we have the CloudGate Micro. Now the Micro is just like the Rev4, but without the expansion cards. And since there's no expansion available, as you can see, the form factor is much smaller than the other ones we've already looked at. Now this is a really good option if you have a project where, like I said before, you have a PLC that's already collecting the data and all you really need is cellular connectivity to transmit that data to IQ2. The micro has dual ethernet ports, just like the ones we've already looked at. So again, we can set up cellular as either the primary or even the backup, as long as another form of communication is available. Now that we have taken a look at the CloudGate hardware options, Let's move on and talk about how to configure the CloudGate to talk to IQ2. We begin on the CloudGate's login page. Now take notice of the URL. It's slightly different than what you'd use to access the CloudGate's main web interface if you've ever logged into one before. It still obviously begins with the IP address and that can be its local ethernet or even cellular IP followed by forward slash IQ2 underscore config dot HTML. If for some reason you're unable to access this page, it's possible the IQ2 client may not be running and you'll need to contact LEC support for assistance. Now the login credentials will be the same as the login credential you'd use to access the CloudGate's main web interface. Now, if you also don't know what those are, again, you might need to contact LEC support to get that information. Now, at the top of the page, you'll find the protocol drop-down menu. 
Here is where you choose how the CloudGate will pull the data into its IoB DB. There are several options to choose. We have Modbus TCP, onboard IO if you happen to be using the Mini, and Ethernet IP. In this example, we'll choose Modbus TCP. Once the protocol is selected, a new set of fields will appear on the screen. We first must select the type. What are we configuring? Is it an analog? Is it a digital, a long, or a float? In this example, I'm going to choose analog input. Next, enter the register number, whatever that may be. The next thing we need to enter is the cloud name. Now, the cloud name is how IQ2 maps registers to its database. The cloud name must match the type and register chosen. And we say that again, the cloud name must match the type and register chosen. So in this example, I have chosen a type of AI and a register of 100. So my cloud name will be AI 100. Next, do we need a dead band? So if a register value changes by at least this entered value, send that update to IQ2. So if I put a, put a check mark into the enable dead band checkbox, the dead band field appears. And I'll say if my value changes by more than, I don't know, 10, in either direction, so plus or minus 10 points, go ahead and send that update up to IQ2. Next, we have to enter an IP address. Now the IP address here is the ethernet IP of the device the CloudGate is polling. It doesn't matter, is it a PLC, is it an RTU, whatever we are connected to via the ethernet port on the front of the CloudGate, what is that connected devices IP address. It's local Ethernet IP address. Whatever that is, enter it into the IP address field, followed by the port number that that device is listening on. Since we're using Modbus TCP, I'm going to go ahead and leave that port at 502. When done, we simply click Add. It will now be added to the configuration table below. So let's go ahead and add another one real quick. This time I'm going to do a DO, okay? So let's say Modbus TCP once again, register, DO. We'll make this, um, I don't know, we'll let's stick with 100. So what's my cloud name going to be? Type DO, register 100, cloud name is DO 100. Dead band, since it's a digital, I will change that to a one. And then my IP address, my port remains the same. Click Add. Now, if you were configuring a CloudGate Mini and had to set up one of the onboard I.O., then from the dropdown, you would obviously choose onboard I.O. From there, the setup is pretty much the same. You start with the I.O. reg. So which of the three ports on the front of the CloudGate Mini do you need to set up? Is it one, two, or three? I'll just choose one. Next, I.O. type. Now, how the I.O. is configured in the main GUI screen of the CloudGate will determine your choice here. So let's say I configured the first port on my CloudGate Mini to be an output. So from this dropdown, I would obviously choose output. Next, my cloud name, I.O. 1. I'm going to go ahead and eliminate the dead band. And because this is onboard I.O., there's no IP address or port to enter. I'm done, and I could click Add. Now, since I'm not using a CloudGate Mini here, I'm not going to click Add, um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that alone. The next option we'll wanna configure is the interval. Now, this value is how often you want the CloudGate to send all of your data values to IQ2. By default, we normally set it to around five minutes, but you can set that to any time frame you like. Just keep in mind, the more often you send values to IQ2, the more cellular data will be consumed. Currently, I have mine set for 200 seconds, so I'll just go ahead and leave that alone. Now that all of our IO points are configured and ready, the last step is to click Save. Now that I've clicked Save, the IQ2 client will start pulling data immediately and then start sending those values to the portal at our set interval. 
Let's say you ever wanted to delete tags. That's a pretty simple procedure as well. It's a matter of just putting a check mark next to the, the tags you want to remove. I have four I want to remove. I click remove, save. Now those uh, tags are gone. Lastly, we can export our IQ2 register table into a file that can then be saved as a backup just in case this device ever needs to be replaced for any reason. Or say you have another cloud gate that has the exact same register mapping. You can take this exported file and import that to the other one, which can save considerable time, especially if you have a lot of tags. To export, it's pretty simple. You simply click the export configuration file link that will then download the file to whatever default uh, a folder your browser uses. And then you can take that and import it. To import a file, click import configuration. Then you choose file, click that. Navigate to the folder wherever that file resides. Let's say it's this one here. I click on it, click open. My tag table is populated, and then when I'm done, I click save, and now I'm ready to go. This concludes our walkthrough of how to configure tags on an option CloudGate Edge router. If you would like additional information about IQ2 or any of the other many benefits that LEC has to offer, you can simply request that info by sending an email to info at lecinc.com. Also, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our latest videos. Simply search LEC Inc. on YouTube to subscribe. From all of us at LEC, I'm Matt Kreitz. Thanks for watching.